On a normal night, Bob Saganowski explains that the streets of Brooklyn are not the safest in the world. All of the money moves from person to person until it gets to a drop bar, which is a place chosen at random to be the city's safe deposit box. Even the owners don't know when their bars will be the new drops. They just have to take the money and not ask too many questions. He says that his job is just to wait and take care of Cousin Marvin's bar. On a new night, a group of men toast an old friend with a free drink, which Marvin, who used to own the bar, doesn't think is quite right. As he walks through the streets, he hears something far away, but he can't make out what it is. When you look more closely, he sees a small boxer puppy in a trash can that is crying and bleeding very hard. After Bob saves him, he meets the house owner. He tries to explain what happened, but she is more afraid of the man being in her yard. After taking his picture to protect herself, the woman told him her name was Nadia and asked him to come inside. They take care of the dog's wound. Bob finds out that Nadia works as a waitress but used to save animals. He talks to Marvin about it, and Marvin tells him that it's just a dog and that taking care of it shouldn't seem like an impossible task. After a normal night at the bar, a couple of masked thieves burst in and demanded the money from the night. Marvin tries to talk to them, but they are too scared to say anything. Bob notices that one of them has a watch that seems to be stuck at a certain time. As soon as the thieves leave, Bob and Marvin go looking for Rarty, the doorman of the bar, who is hurt and lying in an alley. When things calm down, Detective Evandro Torres appears and tells Bob that he is one of the churchgoers who always sees him there. In a casual conversation, Torres says that he has noticed that Bob never takes communion at church. Bob defends himself by saying that it's none of Torres's business. Marv criticizes Bob for giving away a clue about the watch as they leave. He says that since the thieves didn't get the big deal that day, they shouldn't worry about more. At least that's what Bob thinks, and Marvin tells him that the bar owners will eventually want the money back. Bob chooses the name Rocco for the dog because he had seen a picture of Street Rocco in church that morning. On their way home, after dropping Nadia off at her house, a mysterious man watches them from a distance. This is how Bob starts to deal with his new life as Rocco's owner. Chavka Yumarov, the owner of the bar, shows up at work with his men to show Marvin and Bob that they have a hurt man in the back of their van. They talk about the theft from the other night, and he threatens them to get his money back. Detective Torres looks into Yumarov's bar as part of his investigation. He wants to know more about Marv and his history with the bar, because he thinks Marv had something to do with the robbery. Marvin is nervous at home, and after he leaves, he runs into one of the masked robbers, who tells him that he planned the whole thing. At Marv's house, his sister Dottie tells him that their father, who is in debt, will be moved to a worse place because of unpaid bills. Even though she says she might unplug him, Marv insists on keeping him alive because he is sure that his plan to rob the bar will work. During a trip with Nadia, she says that Bob is the only person who doesn't ask about her bruises. He tells her that it's none of his business, and she agrees. She says that during one of her bad times, she hurt herself with a potato peeler. The trip is cut short when Rocco makes the waitress ask them to leave. Bob also talks about the man who is looking for his dog. Bob goes outside to fix some trash cans and finds a bag with money and an arm in it. He thinks it's the money that was stolen the night before because the arm has the same stopped watch on its wrist. He decides to bag the arm himself. Marvin compliments him on how well he seems to handle everything, but he scolds him for mentioning the watch clue the night before. As they talk, the mystery man walks back into the bar and greets Bob. He also says hello to Nadia, which shows that he knows her. Marvin tells Bob that the man is Eric Deeds, a dangerous thug in the slums, and that he should be careful around him because it is said that he made Richie Whelan go missing. He brings up Eric Deeds, which starts a small fight with Nadia that ends with her leaving in a bad mood. Umarov goes to the bar. After telling Marvin about this mistake, Bob gives him a drink and some money, which he takes. He then says that the next drop job is on Super Bowl night. Nadia says that Deeds used to be her boyfriend, but that they broke up because their relationship got too complicated. Bob doesn't think anything bad of her, and he says that neither he nor Rocco blames her for anything. 
She asks him about his connection to the bar, and Bob tells her that Marvin is his real cousin, so they've known each other for a long time. Marv is also looking for Fitz, who was involved in the robbery. Fitz tells Marv that his brother has gone missing. Marv tells him about the job with the Super Bowl, but Fitz doesn't want to get too close. Before leaving him, Marv asks Fitz to close the trunk of the car. When Fitz does so, Marv hits him from behind with a new car and drives away from the crime scene. It seems that Deeds doesn't like the idea of Bob feeling better because he has a dog, so Marvin offers Deeds a way to solve their problem. Detective Torres gets a hold of Deeds' file and reads it. He is interested in what he sees because he knows something else about Deeds' story. Bob goes to Deeds' house. Deeds tells him that he will let everything go if Bob gives him $10,000 the next day. If he doesn't, he'll call the police and get his dog back so he can hurt it whenever he wants. Then Bob goes to see Marv and tells him that they'll have temporary workers on Super Bowl night. Bob tells him that he thinks Marv had something to do with the robbery, but Marv gets angry and tells him to leave. Instead of going with Bob to get the money, Deeds breaks into Nadia's house the next morning and forces her to go on a date that night, which upsets her. Bob talks to the man and asks him why he's there with Nadia and why he didn't look for the money in the morning. Deeds doesn't say much and talks on the phone with Marv, who tells him not to do anything hasty. Instead, when the bar closes, Deeds is left alone with Nadia and Bob. Bob gives him the money, but Deeds isn't happy with that, so he asks to check the safe in just four minutes. Bob quickly pulls out his gun and shoots Deeds twice, killing him instantly and showing Nadia that he is cold and heartless. When Deeds' phone rings, Bob answers it because he has a bad feeling about it. Marv is on the other line, but neither of them can hear the call. Bob starts making plans to get rid of Deed's body, and then he and Rocco go see Yumarov and his men. Yumarov tells him that he talked to Marv so that Bob could now own the bar. He also tells him that one of his goons kills Marv from afar. It would now be Bob's bar, and as long as he saved Yumarov's money, everything would be fine. Umarov leaves Bob, making him feel even more alone than before. The next day, Detective Torres goes to the bar to comfort Bob. Bob says that Marv's deal was a carjacking, but Torres thinks it was more like an execution. He changes the subject to Deeds, who they say they saw the night before at the bar. Bob says that he didn't notice anything strange because it was Super Bowl night, and the detective says that Deeds disappeared without a trace, just like Richie Whelan. Torres is confused by all of these disappearances, and Bob stays in line by acting like he hasn't seen anything. Even if it's in a mental hospital, Deeds might turn up soon. Torres tells him that Deeds was in an asylum the night Whelan went missing, so the stories don't match up. Deeds told the story because he thought it would give him street creed, but they never found out who did it. Before Torres leaves, he tells Bob what he thinks is going on, and Bob no longer feels safe about it. Bob walks Rocco to Nadia and tells her that he doesn't want to hear from Rocco ever again. Instead, she goes to get her jacket while Bob and Rocco wait outside with excitement.